These are Hisuian Pokemon and right now they can only be found in Pokemon Legends Arceus. But once we get compatibility between Pokemon Home and Scarlet and Violet, we'll finally be able to trade these Pokemon into these 9th generation titles. Which leads us into today's video where we'll be doing the ultimate shiny hunting preparation guide for all of the pre-evolved Hisuian Pokemon that are currently available in Scarlet and Violet so you can have them all ready to evolve when we finally get Pokemon home. There are currently 8 Pokemon that are available to shiny hunt in Scarlet and Violet right now that have Hisuian evolutions which I assume will be accessible once home compatibility lands later this year. These evolution methods are not currently known as some of the Legends Arceus evolution mechanics won't translate into Scarlet and Violet but this is something I will cover here on the channel when that information is known. The first Pokemon we are going to go after is Petalil which is the pre-evolution of Lilligant and more importantly Hisuian Lilligant. The best area to shiny hunt this grass type Pokemon is going to be in the West Province Area 1. Head to this Pokemon Center and follow the path to where you encounter the Titan Pokemon from your playthrough and just past this area Area, you will come to a clearing next to a cliff edge and it's in this spot we can use the picnic method. Once you are positioned on the verge of the grassy area, make sure the first thing you do is to drop a save so if you don't get a shiny Pokemon in the allocated 30 minutes from your sandwich power, you can reset and start this next stage again without wasting any Herba Mysticas. Now it's time to make a sandwich. To increase our shiny chances, we will be using ingredients to get a sparkling power level 3 for grass type Pokemon. With sparkling power level 3, it increases the chances of a shiny appearing from 1 in 4,009. 96 to 1 in 1024 and if you have the shiny charm like I do those odds max out at 1 in 683. Getting sparkling power with a sandwich recipe can be done with a variety of different recipes and I'll link to a few of these in the description which may be helpful especially if you would prefer to mix and match your Herba Mystica like I do. Once you have made your sandwich you only need to stay in this one spot and take down your picnic. If you're positioned right you should see a cluster of petalil spawn in front of you like this. It's worth noting you will also get spawns of gogots in this area as well but this is probably the best area where you can get a concentrated amount of petalil spawning in at once which makes shiny hunting this pokemon a lot easier. So once you've taken down your picnic and no more Petalil are spawning in, just set your picnic up again. This will despawn whatever is in the field and then take your picnic down to get a new batch of spawns in the exact same spot. You can use your camera function to zoom in on these spawn Pokemon to get a closer look at them. And Petalil is not a difficult shiny to spot. It has blue eyes and a lighter green colored body than its regular form which has red eyes and a darker green color to it. If you repeat this method of setting up and taking down your picnic you will eventually get the shiny to spawn in and as soon as it does just save your game in case anything goes wrong and proceed to catch it. The next Pokemon we will be shiny hunting is Teddy Ursa and Ursa Ring. So we have it ready to evolve into Ursulana once Pokemon Home is released. The easiest shiny hunting spot for Teddy Ursa and Ursa Ring is in the North Province Area 2. From the Pokemon Center, make your way into the Bamboo Forest until you reach this boulder situated in this embanked area. Now this is a little bit tricky, you're going to have to make sure you position yourself well on the boulder. You want to be standing at the bottom edge of it, just in front of where it starts to incline. Again, in this position, drop a save and then set your picnic table up to make a sandwich, this time for the Sparkling Power Level 3 for normal type Pokemon. Once you have this active, take down your picnic table and watch as clusters of the Teddy Ursa and Ursa Ring spawn in. If no shiny appears, then just set your picnic up again and take it down to repeat this process. The shinies for Teddy Ursa and Ursa Ring are very easy to spot, being a bright green colour compared to their brown counterparts. If you keep repeating this process of spawning in these family clusters, you will eventually see the shiny spawn in. 
There will be Orangaroo dotted in around these Ursa Ring and Teddy Ursas, but for the most part, the Teddy Ursa and the Ursa Ring are going to be the more dominant spawns in this spot, making it really easy to identify. Next Pokemon we will be shiny hunting is in the same area as the Teddy Ursa and Ursa Ring in the Bamboo Forest, but this time it's going to be for Scyther, the pre-evolution of Cleaver. Again, before we start, save your game and make another sandwich, this time giving you sparkling power for level 3 for flying type Pokemon. Once you take down your picnic, Scythers will start to spawn all through this area. Instead of staying in a static spot for this hunt, I found it easier to loop around the entire area, checking each Scyther that spawned in. And this is just because the Scyther are very difficult to kind of spot. I think if you're in that same place as you were with the Teddy Ursa and the Ursa Ring, you find it difficult to kind of see the shiny in your game because even with the zoom function, the boulder gets in the way and it's not super clear. So just by running through the spawns as they spawn in, you can take a closer look at each and every one of them. You'll be wanting to look out for a pinky red color to their legs and their chest plate, which sits just under their head. And that's a really good way to identify the shiny from its regular sprite. The green coloration is slightly different, but not as noticeable as you would like it to be. So these identifiers with its legs and its chest plate are probably the best ones to go for. And again, it's not a difficult shiny to go for in this area area you're gonna get so many scythers spawning in at one time and if you keep moving more and more will spawn in so you should get the shiny pretty easily and it eventually did appear for me after a couple of sandwiches set up next location we're gonna to head to is for preparations to get ourselves a Hisui and Gudra once Pokemon home comes to Scarlet and Violet for this we'll be going after a shiny Gumi the best location to hunt shiny Gumi is gonna be in the south province area for fly to this watchtower here on your map and make your way into the area with a number of ponds throughout the grassy plains. Once here, drop a save like always, set up a picnic and this time make a sandwich that gives you sparkling power level 3 for dragon type Pokemon. Once you have done this, it's a similar method to how we hunted the Scyther. Take your picnic down and do loops of the pond areas in this area. And doing this, the Gumi will spawn in and despawn as you move around the bodies of water. And this is all you have to do until the shiny does appear. Gumi is an easy shiny to hunt compared to some of the other Pokemon in this guide. With its yellow body and purple cheek patches, you'll have no problem identifying this Pokemon when it does spawn in. If you're 30 minutes does run out however like it did for us and you haven't had any luck catching it on your first sandwich then simply reset your game and start the hunt again this way like we mentioned earlier it's a good method to prevent you wasting Herba Mystica without getting a shiny. Moving on to our next shiny hunt location and it's going to be for Rufflet which can evolve into one of the best shiny Pokemon in my opinion in Legends Arceus at least and that is going to be the Hisuian Bravery. To get this shiny Pokemon head north to Cascarafa and then into the Acedo Desert area. Set your picnic up once you are here and again make a sandwich giving you sparkling power level 3 for flying type Pokemon. This method is slightly different from the ones we have used up to now where you will be going into the town of Cascarafa and then straight back into the Acedo Desert to despawn and respawn these Pokemon. But just bear in mind you only need to take literally one step into the town so the text comes up on your screen and then turn around and go back into the desert area and by doing this you will despawn anything that is active in the overworld when you go into the town when you come back into the desert you'll get a brand new batch of spawns rufflets will appear in clusters so the number you will be able to encounter throughout your 30 minute sparkling power period will be a lot so finding the shiny shouldn't be too difficult you want to look for the brown body for the shiny version over the blue body rufflet which is its normal form and just bear in mind if there is a sandstorm brewing if you've been using a false swipe user beforehand keep in mind that that false swipe user is not going to be something you're going to want to use as I 
and out to my regret after doing it in a sandstorm because the residual damage from the sandstorm will actually chip away that remaining one hp and sadly i didn't save before this reflect so i actually lost this one and it was pretty frustrating so to save you doing that just make sure when you spot that shiny first of all take my advice from earlier on in this video and save initially and then you'll be able to always guarantee that you'll get that shiny no matter what you do after that point stan Lair is going to be our next shiny hunt which in legends our case evolves into weird deer and that is going to be our next target the best area i have found to shiny hunt stan Lair is in the south province area five if you fly to this pokemon center and then make your way across to the top of this ridge which is right beside the land bridge between these two areas then when you're here save your game set up a picnic and make a sandwich with the sparkling power level three for normal type pokemon this of course is going to spawn all sorts of other normal type pokemon which are quite common in this area but this particular area where we are right now on top of this ravine seems to be the best spot for standlers to spawn in and they seem to be the more dominant normal type spawns opposed to everything else in the other areas nearby the method i used to success for this shiny hunt was to just do loops around the outer edge of this area which allowed the further away stantlers to despawn and helped cycle in new ones when i got closer to them and then by doing this and doing loops around this area the shiny didn't take all that long to appear in this area and of course it was a very easy shiny to spot as well being a bright green color opposed to its normal brown coloration so a very easy shiny to spot when it does spawn in our next location is for bergmite which has the potential to evolve into hisuian avalug best shiny hunting spot for bergmite is located in the north province area one once you get to this area open your map and put a marker down for this island just off the shore of this area head out to it and once you are here drop a save as usual set up your picnic and make a sandwich for sparkling power level three for ice type pokemon the sandwich recipes i have been using throughout this guide have been one one tomato one green pepper one onion one hamburger and then two of whatever ingredient relates to the type of sandwich power i want to activate for ice types i use two cloth sticks in this recipe and then one bitter and one spicy herba mystica this as you can see gives us the sparkling encounter and title power level three which is active for 30 minutes now once this is done simply use the picnic reset method to despawn and respawn the bergmite and have a look that will spawn in clusters at the far end of this small island bergmite will be identifiable because of its green eyes and yellow feet or yellow lower body so actually a really easy one to spot once it does spawn in and as always with the picnic reset method just set up your picnic to despawn any non-shiny bergmite and avalug and then take it down to spawn new ones into the overworld and it's also worth noting for this hunt you only want shiny bergmite not a shiny avalug as bergmite is the only one out of these two that can evolve into hisuian avalug once home compatibility is finally here now moving on to our final and probably most difficult hunt in this video for basculin so if you're wanting a shiny basculegion when pokemon home releases for scarlet and violet then the only way you're going to get one is through getting a red or a blue stripe basculin in these games the problem starts with it being a water type pokemon if you set up a sparkling and encounter power sandwich for water types even in areas it appears you're going to get a flurry of other water type pokemon spawning alongside with it because every water type is in the water of course there isn't any isolated encounters for basculin unfortunately and the other probably worst thing to keep in mind for this hunt is the fact that its shiny variation from its standard one is nearly impossible to identify it's so subtle the green is only slightly brighter and i'd say not to concentrate on that too much and rather look at its coloration of its fins if you see a normal one it has more white colored fins whereas the shiny has a more yellowy brown color and i'm just giving you my opinion using the fins really helped me identify the shiny in the end especially because the shading in this game doesn't really help with highlighting the slight variations in greens between the shiny and non-shiny basculin 
So the only way to really shiny hunt this effectively in the games to get around the gazillion other water type Pokemon that are in the water, we are going to shiny hunt for Basculin using the mass outbreak method. Now to do this, firstly set up your picnic anywhere you are and make a sandwich using two herba sausages, four rice and one chili sauce. This recipe will give you the encounter power level two for water types and it makes it more likely that water type mass outbreaks will spawn when you start changing uh, outbreaks. To respawn outbreaks on your map, head to any area close to water. For us, we went to the East Province area too. There are two river ways running through this area. Then open your map, hit your home menu, come down to your system settings, down to system and into date and time. In here, make sure your clock via the internet is off. Then click into your date and time options and just A through the options. Don't worry about changing the date or the time and just hit that OK button. Come back into your home menu and back into your game and you'll see the dens as well as the outbreaks will respawn on your map. Now just repeat this process until you get a spawn for Basculin and with the water encounter power set up already, this doesn't take too long to get and we got our Basculin outbreak in little under five minutes. So using this method, wherever you are near a water, near a river or anything like that, it should get the Basculin spawning in. It may take longer than five minutes, but with the water encounter power set up, it shouldn't take too long at all. Now with the outbreak found, the next step is to head over to the outbreak and defeat 60 of the Basculin in this area. Doing this will max out your shiny odds for the outbreak from 1 in 4096 to 1 in 365. After defeating the 60, just make sure you save your game and then set up a picnic making a sandwich that gives you the sparkling power level 3 for water type Pokemon. By doing this, you will increase your shiny odds again to 1 in 680. And if you have the shiny charm on top of this, your odds will then be maxed out at 1 in 512. Now this is where the tricky part starts. I've seen a number of methods used for shiny hunting Basculin. You can just go into the outbreak and knock each one you come across out using your let's go feature with your party Pokemon. If they won't attack the Pokemon, it's because it will be a shiny of course. So if it's a shiny Pokemon, you don't need to worry about your Pokemon knocking it out. And it's a really good indicator without having to kind of stare at the screen so long and figure out whether it's a shiny or not because it's such a hard shiny to identify and when the outbreak ends using this method simply reset your game set up the sparkling power sandwich again and repeat knocking out until you do eventually find that shiny this wasn't the method i used and i used the method where i was actually just swimming amongst the spawned basculin to check if any of them were shiny or not now this was a, maybe a bit of a longer process but at the same time it meant i could take full advantage of my 30 minutes so the sandwich power, I didn't need to keep resetting and I didn't need to keep setting up that sandwich every time the outbreak ended. I just swam beside them. I actually used a picture of a shiny Basculin right next to my computer screen. So I could kind of easily see what the shiny variation looked like compared to the regular one. And as I say, I used the fins as more of an identification for the shiny rather than the green coloration or the variance in green colors between the two. So once I checked all of the spawns in the mass outbreak what I would do is just come onto the bank and then set my picnic up it would despawn everything in the river next to me and then I would just repeat this process over and over again now this took me two sandwiches to get before I was able to get the shiny but I eventually did get it and it was easy to spot when I did notice it through using that method of identifying the fins and not looking at the coloration of the body so hopefully that does help you but with that it does mean we've got all eight possible pre-evolution that are available in Scarlet and Violet ready for when we do get Pokemon Home compatibility later this year. It's also worth mentioning there are also the seven star terror raid starter Pokemon Typhlosion, Samurott and Decidueye that you can shiny hunt by breeding to complete this set. We have covered a number of these shiny hunting videos on the channel already to show you how easy it is to get these shiny starters. So if you want to check out those videos, they'll be linked in the top right hand corner right now. So you've got these starter Pokemon ready for their Hisuian forms when home arrives. I hope you found today's video useful. If you have, please leave a like and do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. Let me know in the comments what Hisuian 
Hisuian Pokemon you are most looking forward to bringing into Scarlet and Violet and what shiny hunt you will be going after first in your game. Thanks so much for tuning in, take care of yourselves and I'll see you all in another video very soon. So until then friends, take care and bye bye.